We've tried everything but one thing. Stop and frisk. Stop and frisk. Under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution, a police officer may stop a suspect on the street without probable cause. What the hell did you just say? Under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution, a police officer may stop a suspect on the street without probable cause. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. And here's the deal. So here's the deal. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Because here's the deal. Here's the deal. Either give me your ID or you go to jail. How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? How about that? How about that? Here's the deal. heading south on Three Points Road. As of the recording of this video, there's a viral video from the Senate floor that was uploaded about 21 hours ago. It already has nearly a half a million views and a like to dislike ratio of 11,000 likes to 300 dislikes. The name of the video is Just In, John Kennedy Issues Epic Warning on Senate Floor. With over 2,200 posts in the comments section, you'll search in vain for any criticism of what the Senator has said, and yet, it's plain as day that this guy, like all senators and congressmen, Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter, don't give a damn about our rights. They'll talk about the necessity of creating safer cities, but their solution is to create a bill that will then become a law that will secure more funding to arm more men with guns so that they can come and take away more of our rights. Kennedy talks for nearly eight minutes about how he loves his state of Louisiana and especially the city of New Orleans. He informs those on the Senate floor that crime is out of control in New Orleans. Murders, rapes, carjacking, burglary, it's all gone haywire. We've tried everything, he says, but one thing. Take a listen. We've tried paying higher salaries. We've tried paying better benefits. We've tried curfews. We've tried task forces. We've tried social programs. We've tried after school programs. We've tried crime cameras. We've tried facial recognition. We've tried conflict management. We've tried mentoring. We've tried youth clubs. We've tried job training. We've tried enhanced educational opportunities. We've tried prosecuting juveniles as adults. We've tried hotspot policing. We've tried 12-hour shifts. We've tried hiring administrative personnel to take the paper uh, workload off our, off our cops to get them back on the street. You name it, Madam President, and we have tried it. We've tried everything but one thing. Stop and frisk stop and frisk i'm going to let him continue talking about the origins of stop and frisk but before i do stop and frisk is also called a terry stop as he'll explain from 1968. this is clearly one of those supreme court decisions that took a look at our freedoms enshrined in the fourth amendment and said screw your unalienable rights to be secure in your person Officer safety is way more important than individual rights, they say. Terry v. Ohio could rightly be called the amendment which nullifies the Fourth Amendment. Listen to the absolute lies this guy spews against your right to be secure. Under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution, a police officer may stop a suspect on the street without probable cause. This is the Fourth Amendment. We're gonna keep this up here while Kennedy spouts his nonsense, and you tell me if what he said is found in this Fourth Amendment. Under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution, a police officer may stop a suspect on the street without probable cause. Where do you see that anywhere in this amendment? A police officer may, quote, stop a suspect on the street without probable cause, he said? 
when the document clearly says you have to have probable cause and a warrant and an oath or affirmation that a crime has been committed. Otherwise, it's considered an unreasonable or unconstitutional or unnatural search or seizure. And this right to be secure shall not be violated, it says. The Fourth Amendment says the exact opposite of what Kennedy just said. This guy is supposed to be a senator. He took an oath to protect the Constitution he's trying to throw in the garbage right now. It's almost unbelievable that he said that. Let's listen to more of this garbage as he tries to justify the violation of our rights. And that police officer can stop that person on the street without probable cause, so long as that police officer has what's called reasonable suspicion to believe that the person stopped has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a crime. This allows cops to embark upon the dangerous road of on-the-spot subjective judgment as they begin fishing for crimes and stripping rights. And after that person is stopped, if the police officer has reasonable suspicion to believe that the person stopped might be carrying a weapon, the police officer can pat down that person on the outside of his or her clothing. That's called stop and frisk. Terry v. Ohio employs euphemisms so that an uneducated people will be duped into believing the cops aren't violating your rights. Stop and frisk is a detainment or arrest and a search, an unreasonable search. You can call it a pat down if you want. It's a search. As soon as they feel something that they don't like in your pocket, they're going to prolong the detention, also known as an arrest, and put their hands in your pockets. It's a very effective law enforcement practice. It is used by police officers every day in virtually every city all across America. And it has been used since 1968. Which means that since 1968, cops have been using the tyrannical Terry v. Ohio usurpation of the Fourth Amendment to violate rights while maintaining that they're not violating anybody's rights. In 1968, the United States Supreme Court decided a case, a very famous case, called Terry v. Ohio. Terry v. Ohio. The, uh, the very liberal chief justice, I don't use the word liberal in a pejorative sense, I'm just describing him as, as many scholarly works have, the very liberal chief justice Earl Warren actually wrote the opinion in Terry v. Ohio, and he was joined in that opinion by Justices Hugo Black, Justice John Harlan, Justice William Brenner, Brennan, Justice Potter Stewart, Justice Byron Stewart, White, Justice Abe Ford, Fortas, and Justice Thurgood Marshall. They all said together, here's our opinion, Terry v. Ohio. And what did that opinion say? Before we get to Kennedy's interpretation of what that opinion said, let's note that of all the justices that decided to pulverize our Fourth Amendment rights, there was one guy who stood against them. Justice William O. Douglas who strongly disagreed with permitting cops to stop and search an individual absent probable cause. Listen to his dissenting opinion and warning. He said, we hold today that the police have greater authority to make seizure and conduct a search than a judge has to authorize such action. We have said precisely the opposite over and over again. To give the police greater power than a magistrate is to take a long step down the totalitarian path. Perhaps such a step is desirable to cope with modern forms of lawlessness, but if it is taken, it should be the deliberate choice of the people through a constitutional amendment. Douglas understood that his colleagues arbitrarily demolished a fundamental right of all Americans by empowering cops to make snap decisions on the street to search people and seize property, an action that even judges have no power to authorize. 
it shouldn't be called Terry v. Ohio at all. It should be called totalitarianism versus America. That opinion said that under appropriate circumstances, stop and frisk is permissible. It is perfectly constitutional under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution. Everybody who's not a patient in a funny farm and has the ability to read and understand English knows this is a lie. Terry v. Ohio is perfectly unconstitutional and tyrannical. This is part of the reason crime is so high, cops are so hated, prisons are so full, and courts are so prosperous. And yahoos like this right here feed into this. Now, I want you to note that a police officer cannot stop and frisk somebody on a whim, uh, 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 on a hunch. A, a cop does not have unfettered discretion. Terry v. Ohio is a whim. It is a hunch, and it does give cops unfettered discretion. In order for a police officer to, to stop a person on the street, that police officer, let me say it again, must have reasonable suspicion, reasonable suspicion to believe that the person has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a crime. And once again, once the person is stopped, the cop can frisk that person on the outside of his clothing, called a pat down, only if the cop has reasonable suspicion to believe that the person stopped is carrying a weapon. Why does the cop have this authority? To protect the cop d during, during the question. So not only are your Fourth Amendment rights to be secure in your person violated, now they want to remove your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. These people are truly evil as they claim to be preventing evil by infringing on your rights. Reasonable suspicion is not a hunch. It's not a whim. It's an objective standard. It's not probable cause. You have to have probable cause to make an arrest, to conduct a search, for example, of someone's home. Probable cause is a higher standard. But reasonable suspicion is an objective standard. Reasonable suspicion exists according to the case law, as you know, Madam President. Reasonable suspicion exists when an objectively reasonable police officer given the facts and circumstances of that particular situation and considering the cop's training and experience would suspect that a person, as I have said, has committed, is committing, or, or is about to commit a crime. So who exactly is going to determine that the cop was reasonably objective? You guessed it, the police department. The police department will investigate themselves and find that they've done nothing wrong or unconstitutional while they're depriving you of your rights. And if, 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 uh, if probable cause is then established, of course, the person can be arrested. Every cop in America who goes through training academy, and every cop in America does, every cop in America knows about stop and frisk. Every cop in America is trained in the law enforcement practice of stop and frisk. And this fundamentally means that every cop in America has been trained to hate Americans and their rights. Let me give you an example. Let's suppose a police officer is driving by and he sees an individual late at night walking along the street with a coat hanger or a Slim Jim. Do you all know what a Slim Jim is? It's sometimes called a lockout tool. It's a way to get into a car if you lost your keys. If a police officer sees someone late at night walking down the street with a coat hanger or a Slim Jim looking in cars, the police officer can stop that person. Can he arrest that person? No. He does not, does not have probable cause. No crime has been committed. But he has reasonable suspicion to stop and talk to that person. 
And once he stops to talk to that person, if he sees a big bulge here in his top pocket, he, he may have reasonable suspicion to believe that person has a weapon. Why would he not have a weapon? This is America. Why would the cop have a problem with an American having a weapon? The cop has a weapon. The Second Amendment says we have the right to keep and bear a weapon, and the cop promised to protect that right to bear a weapon. What if the guy has a Slim Jim because he locked himself out of his own car? What if the guy looking into the car is from AAA and he's there because you called him? The bottom line is, unless you're committing a crime, nobody has the right to bother you. Not even a cop, no matter what they suspect. And no matter if they think it's reasonable or not. And it would be dangerous for him, to, him, the police officer, to keep talking to that person. So the police officer, he can't make him, him take his jacket off or anything, he can just pat him down to see if there's a weapon. Now, I repeat, cops all over America stop and frisk suspects every single day, and they have for 50 years. And you know who endorses it? The United States Supreme Court. Now, like all police practices, it can be abused. Stop and frisk can be abused. And when it is, it can be, and it should be challenged in court. And the abusing officer should be held accountable. But most officers don't abuse it. I can't even go on with the lies here. We'd be here all day. I'll leave the link to the original video in the description. I want to hear your thoughts on this, so leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, maybe you'll like some of my others. Take a look at my popular videos list. There are a lot of videos that a lot of people haven't seen and really should take a look at. Also, I have in my playlist a memorizing rights and laws folder that'll help you memorize the Bill of Rights and some other laws that pertain to securing your freedoms as we navigate through law enforcement minefields. You can loop the videos and memorize these things fairly quickly. Help me overcome the algorithm by leaving your thoughts in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification icon, give this video a like, and share it with everybody you know. Subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to support the channel, grab a hard-hitting, conversation-starting design from the store. You can put it on a shirt, hoodie, mug, whatever you want. I will see you in the next video.